This so. is Dog Rescue TV. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. That car is booted. So where are we? So we see a cage in the back here. We are in Detroit on the east side. We see a, a dog chain back here. Uh, you see the cage on the porch? Yep. Hi, buddy. Ah! He's up on the porch. All right, let's see what's going on, Terry. So what do you do here, Terry? Well, let's call the person who contacted me and see if she knows whether or not somebody's home. There's somebody in there. I can see them. You can? Yeah. Please answer your door. And that's against the law to, to leave your dog out like that, especially a puppy. Um, he says that he just let the dog out to go to the bathroom, but that's not correct. So my phone's not working right. That's the kicker of it all today. Just so what do you want to, what's, what's the end goal here? What can we do? Um, well, we instructed him to bring the puppy in, and that's what he's doing right now. So that's all we can do. Uh, so what's going on? This lady's going to show us proof. Um, okay, I'm going to go over your shoulder then. Okay, I have proof here. I have uh, so many videos. Oh my god. Um, There's a neighbor out there over there. Okay, I, I don't want anyone to see me. You want to just, um, yeah. just wait up against Hop in. Um, this is one. And then eventually I zoom up and you can see the puppy through the gate. In a couple seconds I move over. Why do you believe they're being fought? I'm not on you. That's what we were hearing and seeing too, just now too, too. This puppy is left out all the time. And thank you guys for coming, coming so quickly, like, oh, thank you, sorry. This puppy is left out every day. 
night and day. Well, I told him next time I'm coming with the police officer, so I'm not going to be nice next time. Thank you. So, but did you said something about them trying to fight dogs in the front well, yard? The, the neighbors down there, they said there's another little puppy, and the little kids will sit in the front yard and try and, like, go with them to Engage go at each them. other. Right. Which, obviously, is If you can get a video of that, we'll come yes. and we will, that'll give me um, enough evidence to confiscate the dogs. Okay. Because that's illegal okay, great. Uh, activity. So the next time you hear that puppy or see that puppy, you call me, I'll be back with the police officer. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. I've called Have so you, many people. Like no, that. hold on. Sorry. No, that's what I was just going to ask you. I just okay. kismet. So you were just going to say you've called a bunch of different locations. Yes, I have. And everyone just kind of says, well... Can you say who you called? I, you're I, not on camera. I No, I, I've i called so many numbers. I, um, I, I can't even remember now. I would just... I Googled... Um, Pitbull Rescue, Humane Society, and I just called every number, and whoever picked up, I just gave them the information. So I can't How remember. How many people picked up, do you think? Maybe three people three out people. of 15. Did anyone else show up? No. You were the only people I've shown up in. And that's our problem here in Detroit, is that, you know, we have no other organizations responding, and, you know, we're, again, I, I do the best I can, but I'm, you know, we don't have a lot of people, we don't have a lot of resources, so it's us running all over the city. But we try to respond to every single call that we get. It's right. tough, but we do respond. Well, that's the thing I don't understand, quite frankly, Terry, is they have resources. They've got trucks, personnel, people that are specific for it. Paid you're people, actually, we have no paid people. We you're nobody the here cook, gets paid. the chief, right. the bottle washer, the whole deal, and right. yet you still are able to respond to people. Yeah. How, how quick did she respond, just like Um. Oh, God, uh, maybe within an less hour? Than, yeah, within an hour, definitely. Okay. Which was amazing. Because, and the other thing that helps us respond quickly is when they have, she had a video and she had um, proof. When we get video proof, you know, then we're like, all right, we have something to go on here. We have evidence. When we have evidence, we can make things Why happen. is that important? Well, because it, when I have evidence, I can, then I can ask for the assistance of the police department, you know, and stuff. And we have a lot more, um, we have a lot more to go on than, then we're able to respond quicker. as an independent too you're limited and you've got certain boundaries you got to paint it it's like yeah. it's like this paint by numbers landscape and you've got to play within this certain boundaries and you're constrained right. a lot by what you can do but you still figure out how I, to I still try to help you know it's just we can't provide as much help if we don't have any evidence I mean last year we had seven successful prosecutions against either animal abusers or dog fighters this year we currently have two pending cases in Wayne County so when we have enough evidence, then we can actually get people. We have had people locked up. We have people currently incarcerated because of our um, investigative work. Yeah, but it's a lot because, you know, you, you're talking about gathering of evidence. You're talking about, you know, uh, getting with the police then getting with the prosecutor's office and make sure it goes to court and making sure that you have all the proper documentation to make sure that it's a successful prosecution. These kind people called us. Uh, this dog showed up on their porch here and does not belong to them. And I see the poor little guy right there, it looks like, in a box. A box Oh, I bet you're kind of cold, aren't you? You're kind of cold. What happened to you? Did you get a little bit lost? Did you get a little bit lost? So he looks, you know, like uh, somebody was trying to take care of him. He's got a sweater on and his hair isn't terribly matted, but he's definitely cold. So um, we'll go ahead and get him secured and uh, get him to the vet's office and we will try to find his uh, owners and see what happened here. You know what, let's bring him back in the run here. She's for him. And we have the scanner ready right yep, away. I bet you. Let's see. Scan. Come on, bud. Have a microchip. No. Nothing. No chip detected. No chip. I always go offside just in case it... Nothing. Okay, so... We... <laughs> we got a little rod right here for our little Take baby the little bed. Okay. Oh, look you there. That's so cute. Thank you. Yeah, you good little boy. Oh, look at him. <laughs> this is better than being outside in that cold, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good first start. Yeah. How are you doing, Wilfred? Water. He's so sweet. It was very cold. They had him in a box outside. So. Okay. 
shivering. Okay. He was shivering. So this raised someone's child now? Uh, they showed up on their porch. He showed okay. up on their porch, and so they put a box out there with a blanket in there, but you know, they had other dogs in the house and wanted to bring them in. Okay. So. All right. So he's, he's, he's out there. He's cute. Yeah, isn't he adorable? He doesn't have a chip. It looks like he had just recently gotten through. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll put a shout out on uh, for the love of Louie, okay. and we'll notify Detroit Animal Control that we're in possession of the dog, and uh, notify Macomb County as we do to let them know that we have picked up a stray in Detroit. And we'll now, see if we can now, find another. Why do you notify those other parties too? Well, it's the law. So okay. we do notify Detroit Animal Control that we're in possession of the dog, and we send an email to Macomb County Sheriff's Office to let them know that we picked up a stray dog in Detroit and it's being housed in Macomb County. Okay. Very good. Hi. 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 Later, we are going to go sit in with her and get the yeah. to it. Yeah, we'll I figured if we could put her under, we'll, we'll get all the mats out. Oh. Some officers contacted us. They saw her living in an abandoned garage, and uh, she was off of the service drive, and they were afraid she was going to be hit by a car, so we went and trapped her. She was not happy to be rescued, but now look at her. Isn't she adorable? Is she okay if I went in? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me spend just a moment with her. Hi. How you doing, Tinkerbell? Hi. You got, some, you got some smelly good food here. This is the smelly good right here. Hi. She's now, how long has she been here? Since Super Bowl Sunday? Uh, well, no, she was at my house for a couple days. She was so scared we didn't want to traumatize her too much. So she, we, she was brought here today, but she was at my house. Uh, yeah, she doesn't care for me and my camera. Yeah, she's a little scared, but she's... Yeah, it's okay. Can you have a sniff? Want a sniff? Hi. Just a sniff. Is that a sniff? Hi. Yeah, you're all bundled up. Girl. Yeah. Girl. She loves cheese, don't you? That's your favorite food. Hi, Tinkerbell. Hi, good girl. What is she? What's what? Uh, what's going on with the ears and the facial? It looks, you know, look, it looks like she got attacked. The one ear has split in half on, on the left. If you look, it would be her right ear, but from your point of view, it would be the left. You see that ear split right in half, and so probably got attacked some time ago uh, by another dog and, and never got treated. So she is a doll, though. She's really is warmed up uh, to me and loved Jim right from the start. She has an interesting face. She looks like more of the international dogs that we see, you know, really? these mm -hmm. collective mixed mutts. So, you know, but you got a little foxy in you. Yeah. Do you got a little foxy. All right, let me come out of here. <coughs> you see our uh, Barbo puppies, if you're interested in that. I am. Um, and these just came in. Yeah, came in yesterday, uh, dumped on the side of the road. A uh, DTE worker saw, uh, saw the person actually take a, the, a blue bin, put it on the side near I-94 in Cashew in Detroit. And he saw the bin moving and then saw a head pop up. And so as soon as he got up on the dogs, he pulled over and uh, he took possession of them and called us. And and the, it turns out these puppies are very sick. They are uh, parvo. They have parvo. So they're being treated for parvo right now. So Do you suspect that somebody like got a hold of the puppies and there was a discovery of parvo and they're just like, hey, we got to get rid of them? Probably. Uh, I just wish that they would contact us or almost any other rescue, humane society, anybody. But don't leave puppies out that are sick on the side of the road. You know, obviously it's not a good idea. So we have the two little males. They're here. Names? Uh, uh, we have Tigger and Pooh, like Pooh Bear. And then we have Piglet on the other side. That's the female. Perfect. But uh, So these, these little babies, they are on fluids, um, Let me obviously. actually put just a little bit of light on here, too. So huh? receiving fluids and uh, some, you know, as you can see, not feeling good at all. Uh, but they got uh, toys. I know it's not fun, is it? Not feeling good. What are they going through? A uh, parvo treatment right now. So these uh, puppies are all positive for parvo. A, a very preventable disease. Uh, the simple vaccination that doesn't cost that much. What uh, what does parvo do to a dog? What's uh, what parvo happens? basically eats up their uh, intestinal. Uh, system and causes them to, you know, eventually they die of a really dehydration and, um, you know, I, I uh, don't believe it's a very happy death, you know. Okay, yeah. um, show me else who else you have here. See, sorry, so, buddy. Very sorry. So, and this one, 
make sure I'm getting these right. Uh, that one is, what do we see in here? Well, one's Tigger and one's Pooh. Yes. Oh, yeah, Tigger and this one's Pooh. Okay. Oh, look, we got your little tiger there. So. And this dog has parvo. Yeah, he's bought It looks parvo. like it's yeah. a Staffordshire, or, you know, of that yeah. sort. So we um, call them Heinz 57 Detroit Specials. They're a little mix of a lot of things. Okay. And then uh, watch your bleach there. Is you step on the, the bleach just to um, prevent the transmission of the disease. It's a water bleach mix. I'll take just a moment. Let's, let's actually see what's going on here. So right at this moment, we're putting our feet in the water bleach mix. Yep, because Parvo is highly, highly, highly contagious. So uh, we make sure that we do all the right things so that we don't transmit the disease. Okay. And then we got the female here. This is Piglet. And Piglet is uh, the most ill of the three. She is very sick. She immediately, as soon as we brought her in yesterday, uh, started. We can leave her just as a okay. She started throwing up blood uh, and uh, bits of plastic as soon as we brought her in yesterday. So, so Parvo is the type of thing that like it kicks your butt pretty quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it definitely can be a fatal disease if it goes untreated for sure. And uh, we have a lot of people that reach out to us about home remedies. Give them some Vaseline; it will coat their intestines and stuff. We we prefer not to do that. We go uh, with uh, licensed veterinary hospitals that have a lot of experience with this type of disease because we want these animals to have the best chances possible for living. Um, so, uh, and this is a very expensive uh, disease to treat, actually. Uh, this little little guy, um, Piglet, who is. Most severely ill. Prognosis, expectation of Oh, uh, well, we are hoping that she bounces back. But parvo is a type of disease that goes up and down. There's no real treatment for parvo. We basically um, treat the symptoms and make sure that they're hydrated and stuff. There's no, I should say, there's no cure for parvo. There's a, there, we treat the symptoms and hope that um, the dogs live. And 99% and of the time they do live. Uh, we've had, uh, in the history of our organization, we've had one puppy that did die from parvo, complications from parvo. We could not save that dog. But in general, usually we, our success rate's pretty pretty high. Okay. Is so, Parker still in house? Uh, no. Oh, no. Parko, Parker, that was a... Remember, pretty quick. Yeah, that one, he got... Just yeah, that was a while ago. Thing and in and out. Yeah, he, was, he went pretty quick. I'm trying to think of who else we might have here. Uh, we have Willa. Oh, you're yes. with us, Willa. You yes, I want to see Willa. Yes, let's see Willa. Willa might be under... I'm here. sorry, that's who I meant. White Willa. Oh, yes. Who Willa. had... Yes, White Willa, not Parker. Yes. Um, hang on. We're just adjusting. Currently, we're just adjusting our pulse oximetry. Sometimes it gets a little, a little ornery, but it's good now. We can see that we're, uh, we've got an oxygen uh, saturation 97%, a heart rate or pulse rate of 121 beats per minute, which is fine. And we're just closing up the uh, abdominal incision from uh, Willa's spay for ovarian hysterectomy. When we spay a dog, we remove their entire uterus and ovaries. We do not um, tie tubes like in people. I mean, that's now that. And so that's what we're doing. We're just closing her up. So I'm currently closing up her abdominal musculature. Hey, Megan! It's just being ornery. Sometimes those units get a little ornery. It doesn't mean that there's anything bad for Willow. Just decides to be. But I no, I, I seriously appreciate your awareness because you're like, hey, you know what? I'm doing this, but I, I know people like if they're watching this, they'll be like, wow, what's going on? Is there some like kind of problem with the dog? So your awareness is really great. Those units can get dried out or for them. Now it's good. Now now we're just we're actually at ninety nine percent, hundred and nineteen. Baby stable as can be. We're good. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. It helps us reach more dog lovers.